You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Art of Change with your host, Pamela Thompson. Pamela will provide you with the tools to navigate you through any change, personal or professional. Pamela will also be interviewing inspiring women leaders and change makers from around the globe. So now, please welcome the host of The Art of Change, Pamela Thompson. This is The Art of Change. I'm your host, Pamela Thompson, and we're broadcasting live today from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Do you believe we can do more to prepare our youth for the future? Are you supportive of an educational experience tailored to individual needs that encourages creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and innovation? Would you like to learn from a seasoned social entrepreneur who is developing a technology platform aimed at providing these skills and empowering youth? Today's show is called The Future of Learning, Creating a Global Personalized Learning Platform. And I'm excited to share that Rebecca Kirstein is my guest on today's show. Rebecca is a serial entrepreneur, the co-founder of six businesses and two nonprofits. She is a speaker, educator, idea generator, team builder, collaborator, and connector, a conduit to the best knowledge and sponsorship resources for entrepreneurs. The Rethink Thinking Foundation is the culmination of her passion and expertise and the passions and expertise of its founding members who made the choice to connect collaborate, and contribute their energy towards a common goal. Rethinking how we learn, grow as individuals, and come together to build a thriving community that supports its next generation. Rebecca believes that when we vulnerably connect, collaborate, and learn from each other, we all have the capacity to create stronger, more regenerative communities. Her life's work is to create space for youth to discover their highest potential and move humanity forward together. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you so much, Pamela. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show and to learn more and more about what you're up to. So let's kick it off. Well, just tell us a bit about this amazing organization that you founded, Rethink Thinking. Tell us what it is, who it serves, and what prompted you to start it. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it, it was the thing that kept me awake at night for a long time. So currently it is, it is both a charitable organization that, that serves you through event-based personalized learning um, and soon to be a global personalized learning platform. So the, the technology component of this um, is something we uncovered along the way that was a significant barrier to equal access to youth everywhere. So uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it, it serves youth. Obviously, that's, that's the intention is to serve young people. And, and certainly from our perspective and, and uh, in Canada, youth is, is commonly uh, age 13 to 30. So oftentimes people think that we are uh, focused solely on uh, the grade 9 to 12 students that we focus on with our events uh, in the charitable organization. Uh, however, our global platform will actually serve a far broader audience. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, it, what prompted me to start it. Um, that's, that's a great question. And, and there's, a, there's a combination of things there, um, mostly my own experience with formal education um, and, and, of course, having a daughter of my own and, and having her, she's taken a, a, really, uh, a really different uh, educational path. 
Um, and I've seen that be absolutely empowering and uh, an incredible experience watching her life unfold before my eyes and uh, realizing that this was not an opportunity that that most kids had. And, uh, and it became really more of a responsibility than an opportunity to find ways to allow access to these kinds of opportunities to as many kids as possible. So remind us, how old is your daughter today? She is 16 years old today. Wow. Wow. And so she's been part of this initiative since the beginning. Is that so? Yeah, well, she's been, um, it's, I'm not even so much a part. I mean, she's a part of it in that, you know, she is my, she is my human Petri dish. Um, and that <laughs> I really have looked for better ways, uh, along the way as, as her mom and, and, uh, you know, as the primary influence in her life and in her education, I took it really seriously that it was, it was, uh, you know, I had an incredible opportunity to, to look at things differently for her and, and really examine what didn't work for me. And, you know, I'm, I, and I recognize that I'm incredibly in, in, fortunate to live where I live, um, to have, you know, the means that we have to be able to explore that and, and give her access to different opportunities. So she's had a very, very different path. Uh, she goes to an absolutely incredible high school that is very different from what most of us are used to calling high school. Um, and it's here in Victoria where we live, which is called the Pacific School of Innovation and Inquiry. And ultimately, my my work um, in in working with the school and, and volunteering as a mentor myself, um, and and getting to know Jeff Hopkins, the founder, and uh, the model and the education methodology, and you know, really, it's been something I've been invested in most of my daughter's life uh, is learning about education and human development and psychology and neuroscience and you know how all these things link together to ultimately create um, really enriching learning environments. And so I've been fortunate enough to give my daughter access to so many of those things in so many ways. Uh, and it's tremendously affected the way I see learning and uh, the way I see what's possible for all kids everywhere. And uh, it's going to take, it's going to take a lot of us coming together to make that change. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of traditional thinking around education. And uh, I'm just curious about when did you start rethink thinking? How long has this been in the mix, so to speak? Yeah, it's uh, almost, almost four years now. And uh, it's been it's been an incredible journey, and we really did we really did start as an event an event based uh, charitable organization, um, and through that work we we uncovered you know all kinds of things that worked and didn't work, and you know we constantly iterated and reiterated. I mean, speak, speaking of change, um, you know we've been kind of through the through the whole process, really focused on what is actually working for young people, you know, regardless of you know, uh, the financial side of things, the, you know, uh, the partners, the, the needs of everyone else in the, in the ecosystem, um, really focusing on young people and their needs and involving them in the conversation around what's working and what isn't and what they see value in um, has been instrumental in our direction because um, we're really focused on, you know, the end goal of, of serving them and uh, they've been able to inform us along the way about what needs they actually have and, and how we might be able to meet them. That's an incredibly, it's an amazing mission that you have and, and incredible work that you're doing because so often in the past, I think youth's um, ideas were dismissed. And I think we're now realizing yeah. that p kids from a young age really do know th what they want or they're very curious about learning. And um, I, I really, I watched some of the videos on your site uh, related to the youth summit, and I, you went big from the beginning. Uh, I was, I was fascinating to see Sir Ken Robinson um, in one yeah. of the videos because he's an amazing character and I'll just share a little bit about experience I had years about 10 years ago I was designing a group coaching program I actually it was for middle-aged men and women and it was virtual called discover your passion and find the career business of your dreams and when I was doing research for that particular program I came across Ken Robinson's the element and then later subsequently yeah. a bunch of years later his finding your element and so I looked you know I was really taken by his um his approach to education, and I totally got it. And so when I designed the program, I taught, you know, I used the metaphor of life as a stage, and you write your own story and you act it out. 
And subsequently, I did this, and I found it more powerful with uh, 15 to 18-year-old young women face-to-face. And so I totally get the engagement and the need for creativity and collaboration. So we're about to cut to a commercial break. And when we come back, uh, I'll be asking Rebecca about some of the key challenges she's faced since launching Rethink Thinking. It's Pam Thompson host of The Art of Change, broadcasting from BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to in radio. Welcome back to The Art of Change. I'm your host, Pamela Thompson, and with me today as my guest is Rebecca Kirstein, and she is one of the co-founders of Rethink Thinking, a fascinating organization that started off doing events for youth that involved people from a variety of sectors and walks of life as facilitators for these youth, and now they're in the process, and she's part of a process to develop a global personalized learning platform. So before the break, Rebecca was sharing with us a little bit about Rethink Thinking. And um, then I was sharing a little bit too about, you know, the involvement of youth and how traditional education really is killing creativity. And I, I started to talk a little bit about uh, when I was designing a group coaching course a bunch of years ago on discovering your passion and finding the career business of your dreams, how I came across Sir Ken Robinson's book, his first book, The Element, and how fascinating it was, and subsequently, you know, listened to his TED Talk, and I've listened to him further. So I was excited to to hear that Rebecca, from the get-go, had involved him in the first global summit that actually happened in Victoria, British Columbia. So Rebecca, I, I understand you have... You have something you'd like to share about Sir Ken? Oh, I just, I'm such a huge fan of Sir Ken's work. And uh, uh, he is, is quite, quite directly um, a real catalyst for this organization being born in the first place. And I, I saw him speak in New York City uh, many, many years ago, around 2007 or 2008. And, uh, he really just, it was, you know, before he was the number one watched Ted talk in the world, um, his talk was, you know, something I, I hadn't heard before. And I sat in the audience and I laughed, I cried, I connected so many dots about what didn't work for me. And, uh, and ultimately, really that was the catalyst for realizing that I needed to be a part of that change somehow, uh, certainly for my own daughter and, and then later, um, you know, for, for more kids everywhere, because I just see the, the power of what's possible. And uh, he really sparked that. And so him being the keynote speaker at our 
um, inaugural event here in Victoria was just uh, such a dream and to get to meet him in person and, and really have some some time to get to know him a little better. He is an absolutely as incredible of a human being and as witty and as funny and as entertaining and interesting in person as he is uh, on stage. And uh, I just think he's an, an absolutely incredible man and I support his mission wholeheartedly and having him support ours is, has been a real gift. That's that's a thanks for sharing that. And and that's it really shows the power, I think, Rebecca, of when someone has an idea and they share it and with them with social media and TED Talks and all that we have today, how much power you have to impact the world. And I really feel like your youth summits, your village bashes and some other things you have. Do you want to share a little bit more about your youth summits? Because I think they're a really interesting model. Yeah, um, and they and they really are. Um, the thing that I love the most about the summit is that it really was the convergence of several models. Um, you know, it wasn't we didn't we didn't reinvent the wheel. There was there was some models already out there that were working really well, and we just saw a unique way to put them together uh, to ultimately be able to create something really really empowering and really eye opening, um, and and a, and a really great opportunity for youth to collaborate um, not only with each other but within their communities. And so, um, we really did kind of stitch together several models. Uh, one of which being the inquiry, um, more personalized learning model that um, that Jeff Hopkins developed. And certainly, we could on- we could only dive so far into that model in a in a two day span. I mean, the work that he does with young people over days, weeks, months, years. Um, at the school is absolutely incredible. Um, And just even a touch of that inquiry-based model um, combined with uh, both the creative uh, community model, which was developed by an organization called Pi Global, um, and their facilitators are actually uh, trained in our in our summit model, and um, they were an incredible part of sort of discovering how we merge those those processes. And then we ultimately used um, a model that a lot of people are familiar with, um, called um, uh, open space technology. And open space technology is really just the event format of of kind of how we structured the two day event. And really, to, you know, in a nutshell, to describe it is it's an incredibly empowering. Um, experience for young people in that we create a a container that ultimately they co-create and it feels safe and it feels safe to be vulnerable and it feels completely awesome to be wrong and to not have to worry about looking good or ego or you know having the right answers Um, and we just we really found how many young people um, had really never been asked the question you know what matters to you what do you care about what kind of change do you want to make you know and and, and ultimately, in many cases, it, it boils down to, you know, what ticks you off? Like, what do you, what do you see around you that just isn't cool, that isn't working for you? And, and, um, and that really got them to dig a little deeper around the change that they wanted to be a part of and, and that they were um, empowered by and energized by. And they ultimately, throughout the span of this two-day event, end up collaborating with each other and ultimately end up facilitating themselves. And, you know, the kind of the way we say it from the facilitator perspective is that, you know, the more we step back and the more we as the, you know, quote unquote adults in the, in the scenario, um, get out of the way and really let them lead, um, the better job we're doing. And that's ultimately what happens at these events and, and they're highly action oriented and kids actually move forward and take these ideas out into the real world. They sound so exciting. I'd love to attend one sometime. Um, So what key challenges have you faced since launching Rethink Thinking, Rebecca? Oh, my goodness. All kinds of challenges, Pamela. (laughs) Everything from, you know, having to keep my my uh, day job going in the early days of, of building this organization, resources, people, money, you know, all the typical things of any any startup organization. Um, And really also, uh, you know, convening the right people, finding the others, you know, finding the people who get this and understand this and are already working in this space because the collaborative nature of not only the the event model, um, but of the organization is, you know, how do we get out of our silos? How do we bring more people together? Um, because these kinds of opportunities for youth are, are life changing. And um, there's lots of us working in silos. And this was a real opportunity. I saw this as a real opportunity to bring more people together to co create solutions that ultimately had more impact and more scale. And, and how did you find those folks? You said convening the right people. How did you go about finding them? 
Oh man, every every possible way I could <laughs> I could come up with, uh, you know, Twitter and Facebook and um, uh, you know groups online and education groups and psychology and you know really um, getting out there. I did a lot of um, speaking. I did a lot of bringing groups of youth together. I did a lot of uh, talking and working with educators at all levels of high school, university, college. Um, really just getting the perspectives and and I find the best way to bring people together around a topic like this is to really open up to their ideas you know get curious about what's working for them and what isn't and what challenges they see and you know ultimately we just started to uncover more and more people that were in this space trying to make change and it's happening everywhere it's happening all over the world I mean our, our reach got as far as Finland and Hong Kong and Australia. And um, it just really, really opened up because we weren't just focusing on educators or just focusing on youth or just focusing on nonprofits or business. We were focusing on all of it and, and really bringing everyone's ideas to the table. And it ultimately culminated in something far bigger than I could have ever imagined. How exciting. We're about to move to a commercial break. And when we come back, I'll be asking Rebecca some key lessons as she le- that she learned along the way creating Rethink Thinking. Pam Thompson, host of The Art of Change. Stay tuned. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various businesses interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back to The Art of Change. I'm your host, Pamela Thompson, and with me today is my guest, Rebecca Kirstein. And she is a co-founder of an amazing organization called Rethink Thinking, focusing on empowering youth. And before the break, she was sharing some key challenges that she faced when she was developing the organization. One being that how how to you know start a a startup basically with you know getting the needed people, resources, space, as well as keeping another job at the same time, and also finding folks of similar mindset who were into collaboration and wanting to work with youth. And so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask you, Rebecca, what key lessons have you learned along the way with this four-year initiative that you've been moving forward? Oh, I've learned so many. It's going to be hard to boil it down to a couple, but um, I would say the number one thing that I've learned is that everything is possible. There's so many times I've come up against, um, you know, challenges and constraints that, um, you know, seemed kind of insurmountable at the time. And, uh, and ultimately, you know, when you're, when you're driven by um, a mission you believe in, uh, you find a way to get over those, those um, uh, hurdles. And, uh, and I think it's been a a fascinating process of, of kind of self-discovery through that. And uh, I think, I think what I ultimately uncovered through this that I think is probably the most useful lesson to me 
is that fear is actually everyone's biggest constraint. You know, I am not unique. Nobody is unique. You know, we are all, we are all human and, uh, and fear is such a big part of what holds us all back. Um, and it's ultimately the thing that I, that I focus on, uh, when it comes to youth as well is, is, you know, what kinds of tools and resources are out there to support people through that? Because it's ultimately something everyone is struggling with. Um, and it's, you know, it's a very real human experience. So, um, that was a big one for me that I've, I've spent a lot of time focusing on. Um, and probably one of the biggest lessons, uh, I learned in that is that you are the work. Um, and I have had the fortunate opportunity to, uh, be involved with an organization called the Roy group, um, that, uh, is focused on, on coaching and particularly in the education industry and, and beyond. Um, and I've had the opportunity to be part of their programming and really understand their model and, and go through some leadership training with them. And that was a big one for me. You know, I, 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 I think I kind of knew that, uh, but ultimately that was the thing that was it, putting it into those words. You are the work. It's like, Oh yeah, of course I am. You know, it's like all the things that hold <laughs> us back or, you know, in our success is, uh, is related to, you know, our own fears and our own, um, humanness. So that is the real work um, for all of us. And, uh, and that was a big gift. And then, of course, collaboration and critical thinking. They are really the keys to unlocking unseen potential, you know, getting outside yourself, connecting with other people, um, really paying attention to what's going on around you, the tools, the resources, the unseen things that, that are there that we miss you know, um, again and again, and again, that other people can, can reflect back to us. So I, I think that, I think those are, those are my, my top lessons and last, last but not least people first, um, you know, we are all human beings and, and, and putting people first is, is integral to any organization. Um, and certainly in learning, we are all human beings. And when we try to go against the grain of being human, um, that's when we start to see real problems. <laughs> Thank for sh- thanks for sharing those, Rebecca. They're great. Every everything is possible. Love light energy. Fear is everyone's biggest constraint, and uh, it's interesting that you share that because, of course, the work that I do around change. One of the things when I do workshops is the first thing is why do we why do we fear change? Physical physiologically, as you know, we're all hardwired to fear change. Our amygdala is mm-hmm. constantly scanning our environments, right, for anything that is different, anything that it will perceive see as a threat. And what it does, we either go into fight, flight, or freeze. So we either get angry, we run away. Or we, we're totally frozen and we can't make any rational decisions and we can't do anything. So I think that's, that, is, that is such a big one, too, is overcoming that and giving people tools to overcome that. You are the work. I think any leadership training, but also coaching, having gone through um, business and life coaching, that one of the first things that we do is or they do with us is self-assessments. And I think, yeah, it's like with self-awareness we have to start it it starts with us so i love that too you are the work collaboration and critical thinking that's the only way to do it today i mean i remember years ago reading barbara gray this organizational theorist book and she wrote it like i'm going to say like a long long time ago in the 60s and one of the things she said is that if we want to come up with solutions for complex problems and issues we need to collaborate. The more heads and diverse backgrounds and people at the table, the richer and more, uh, what should it, more fruitful and creative are our solutions and people first. So, so good. Absolutely. Love them all. So thank you for sharing those. You're welcome. A bit of a, bit of a different question. What skills do you anticipate students who access and utilize the Rethink Thinking platform will learn? And tell us, maybe you want to tell us now a bit about the platform, because this is this is the well, new aspect of the work it, that it, you're doing. It's been, uh, research and and development for a long time now, and so we're 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 finally in this stage where we have a really good idea of what it needs to look like, and that has largely been informed by by youth themselves. And it's I think I think what's important is that it's actually more it's less about skills and more about more about discovery. You don't know what you don't know. And through the beauty of technology, we can help support young people through giving them unprecedented access to like actual real people all over the world. And, uh, and this is how we learn through inquiry, 
through connection, through self-discovery, you know, everything, everything I ta- just talked about, um, those are not, those are not, those are not book learning skills. You know, those are, those are things we can absolutely learn, learn about in a, in a book, but we cannot, it doesn't, it does not stop there. We need, we need connection and, and real people. Um, and there's a real magic that happens when people engage in a collaborative inquiry process across generations and diverse cultures and worldviews and perspectives. That is so true. And I'm really excited to hear more about your platform and how you formed your collaborative relationships. So we're about to move to a commercial break and more about that after the break. So stay tuned. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Welcome back to The Art of Change. I'm your host, Pamela Thompson, and with me today as my guest is Rebecca Kirstein, and she's co-founder of an amazing organization called Rethink Thinking that is empowering youth and is developing a global personalized learning platform to connect youth from around the world. And so, Rebecca, um, before we were sharing um, some lessons and started to talk a little bit about the platform, the virtual platform you're developing. Can you tell us, um, I know that you're, you're creating partnerships with a variety of groups and institutions that include colleges, universities, youth, social enterprises, and really it's an amazing collaborative model. So uh, can you tell us or give us some advice in terms of building partnerships that you'd give someone or a group wanting to create something like a global technology platform? Absolutely. Um, I think that's one of the, the most integral elements of this, not only for the end users, um, but in really finding a solution that works for multiple groups um, beyond beyond your users. There's, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of need in education um, to provide better tools and, and better access um, all over the world. Um, and building those collaborations really requires us to reach out and and connect with people and get curious about what their challenges are, what their pain points are, how we can solve those pain points. Um, you know, really, really focusing on the needs of the customers and um, and diving deep into you know a really curious inquiry around um, their challenges because there's there's always a lot of them. You know, any organization has significant challenges achieving their goals and uh, and especially when it comes to making change. And so that's really the approach we took um, was, you know, really, really inquiry based, which is not surprising given the nature of uh, what we believe to be true about learning. Um, and, uh, and it's been incredibly fruitful because people really do want to make change. Um, and a lot of people feel constrained by a lot of different things. 
And when you can come to the table with um, tools and resources to help your customers, um, you don't have to do a lot of selling. <laughs> and, uh, and that's really the approach we've taken. So did you, so who else is involved with you? Do you have like key partners all around the world or how does that work? Or yeah, do you have like um, a steering we, we group? We kind of focus. We focused in our in our own backyard to start um, for the beta test of the model, and we really focused on on uh, on our own backyard with the with the beta test um, of of our model. You know, we started from the very beginning uh, with talking to colleges, universities, high schools, um, and in uh, mostly in in um, uh, BC and Alberta to start with, as much as we have connected around the world, um, our beta test is really focused here um, so that we can actually build a real a real community cohort because that's the approach we're intending to take um, as we expand out beyond the beta um, is to really connect with these cohorts that are already trying to connect on the ground without any digital component. So colleges and universities are trying to connect with schools and school districts and high school students and and uh, enterprise are trying to, to connect with, with both of those groups. Um, and there's significant challenges because there isn't one platform out there um, that allows those connections to happen across the generations and, and ultimately across the sectors. So um, that's really where we're focused is, is on those really targeted cohorts uh, so that we can connect people in ways that they've never been connected before and support with already the change that's already trying to happen on the ground um, needs to be supported by technology. And is it, is it too early to share some of those challenges or lessons? Is it early days to share some of those? I understand if it is Rebecca, uh, just. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's early days around, around sharing challenges with the technology because it's in, it's, it's being built as we speak. Um, but yeah, the challenges for, for our partners is, is very much, um, the, the users themselves, their biggest challenges are around building networks. Uh, youth tell us that they are totally afraid of, of LinkedIn and that it isn't a place for them and, um, you know, that all of their, you know, college and university professors and, and high school teachers are telling them to get on LinkedIn as quick as they can and, you know, develop those skills. And uh, it's highly focused on, on achievement and credentials and, um, and education. And when you're new to that world, um, you don't feel like you measure up. Um, you don't feel like people are there because they want to talk to you. Um, it's scary to reach out to people. Um, and it's a very different world for them than it is for, for some of us. And uh, it's, it, there's some significant challenges in that. Uh, 85% of jobs are found through networks and youth tell us that they don't have networks and they don't know how to build them. Um, and youth unemployment is on the rise and that's a, that's a global issue. So there's a lot of challenges there. And, and ultimately 70% of people end up disengaged at work in the, in the long haul. So how do we rewind and, and, and change that from the get go is really by connecting those groups of people so that young people right out of high school are making better, more informed and more empowered decisions about what they want to do with their life, what kind of change they want to make, what kind of purpose they want to have. Um, and these kinds of connections allow them to start uncovering that way earlier so that they ultimately don't become one of those 70% of our disengaged workforce, which unfortunately is a very costly problem, both in human cost and in economic cost. So true. And, and thanks for sharing that. And one of the things I know to be true is from coaching people is our schools do not typically teach us about our passions or to understand them. Typically, you know, people are, are told, you know, when they're in their last years of high school, oh, you're good at math, be an accountant or teach math rather than really giving them tools and fun exercises to explore what their passions are so that they can really go after and identify things that will make their soul sing. And that certainly, I, I'm totally on the same wavelength with you on that, Rebecca. So I understand that we have a caller. Uh, so Gord, I, you, we have a caller with a question on the line. Gord, would you like to uh, share your question? Thank you very much. Yeah, my question is for Rebecca. And the question is, um, how how are you? How's the company being uh, capitalized or financed or getting capital to really expand the business? That's a great question. Should I just crack into it? <laughs> Start it, and then um, we're gonna yeah. we're actually close to a break. So I'm wondering, 
perhaps we should wait till after the break to to start the answer because I don't want to sure. cut you mid midterm. Okay, and while I'm at it here, um, Gord, uh, if you don't mind waiting with us on the line, I'd like to open the lines to other callers, and the number to call in is one eight six six four five one one four five one. That's one eight six six four five one one four five one. So stay tuned. After the break, we'll be speaking with Gord and answering uh, any other questions from callers who phone in. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters in forming a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome back to The Art of Change. I'm your host, Pamela Thompson, and my guest today is Rebecca Kirstein. She is co-founder of an amazing group called Rethink Thinking. And just before the break, we had a caller who came on the line. Gord, are you back with us? And his question was, how is the group being financed to move forward with this new technology platform? Yes, absolutely. Thanks for the, thanks for the question, Gord. Um, we are currently raising uh, more investment capital to expand. So we are talking with several groups of, of investors as we speak, and we absolutely welcome uh, investors to get in touch with us because we have uh, um, a, a, lo- a lot more to share on, on that front. Absolutely. Does that answer your question, Gord, or would you like, do you have another one, or would you like to probe more? Well, this sounds like a big company or big organization being built. I'd be curious to know a little bit more in detail about how much money is being raised and how that's progressing. Absolutely. Uh, we are over over the next 18 months um, raising um, almost $10 million, and, uh, and over the next... Uh, uh, four months, uh, we need to raise another $3 million in capital, um, to, uh, to, to build, to continue the build. So that's, that's the, the, sh- the short of it is that we're going to raise another 3 million over the next, um, three to four months. Um, and, uh, and we are actively seeking more investors to help us do that. Are you, are you good, Gord? Yes. Thank you very much. That really answered my question. Well, thanks for calling Thank in and asking much. the question. It was a great question. Do we have any other callers on the line? Okay, the number to call in if you'd like to ask Rebecca a question is one eight six six four five one one four five one. That's one eight six six four five one one four five one. And um, I'm just wondering if you had Rebecca some last some sort of key other points you wanted to share about the global technology platform or if you'd like to move on? 
Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I am happy to share that, um, that the platform is, it, it will be constantly under development and reiteration. Um, you know, what we, what we are trying to build here is, is no small thing. Um, and ultimately, we are going to be involving our, our end users, the youth, every, every step of the way uh, to ultimately serve them. That's, that's the audience we are highly focused on. And though there are other stakeholders in, in the conversations um, whose opinions and needs absolutely matter, um, at the end of the day, uh, this, this platform is, is entirely focused on the needs of, of youth. So we encourage more youth to get involved. Um, there's going to be more and more ways down the line for, for young people to do that. And we're really excited about the opportunity to really provide something um, that uh, hopefully changes the lives of, of many young people everywhere. So are you in a position right now to, to say what like an experience might be like, say, if I'm somebody who's like 17 and I want to tap yeah. into your technology, what, what will that look like for me? What might that look like for me? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, not, not only will you be able to connect with information and people um, based on your own inquiries, you, you'll be able to have a profile like you might on and on any other platform, but your profile will be much more about your inquiries and your curiosities and the things you want to learn about rather than the things that you've achieved or accomplished. Um, and through that, we'll be able to connect young people, not only to advisors and, and, and ultimately mentorship, um, but also to other collaborators, other peer collaborators. Um, they'll be able to explore education through connecting with real students and real faculty at schools all over the world. We'll be able to deliver them relevant content about grants, scholarships, travel opportunities, all kinds and even jobs. Um, all kinds of opportunities so that youth ultimately get exposed to what they're interested in um, and the opportunities that are out there for them, uh, regardless of, of whether they don't know what they don't know. So I'll, I'll use an example by a student in BC. You know, my daughter, as an example, might be eligible for all kinds of, of grants and scholarships and opportunities that she may not otherwise know about if I wasn't involved in the industry I'm involved in. Um, and there's so much opportunity like that out there. And all of the organizations um, that are youth focused, uh, nonprofit organizations, one of the biggest challenges they all face is getting getting their opportunities and um, and their funding and their money in front of the right students at the right time. Um, and that's a big challenge. It's a big gap. Um, and there's a lot of students in need. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity out there. So that's one of our biggest goals is, is connecting youth to, to opportunity, but, but also to real people. You know, it's, you, you don't know what you don't know. There's so much you can't discover through the beauty of Google. Um, and, uh, and talking to real people about real experiences uh, is so invaluable. That intergenerational learning, the knowledge transfer goes all directions, um, and we all benefit when we have more connection. Now, uh, it sounds fascinating. I almost wish I was a, a youth again <laughs> so I could participate. That said, there's other things about youth I wouldn't want to return to. But <laughs> so, <laughs> so in terms of moving forward, I, I, uh, I'm thinking that if I was a youth and I, can you also give me an example of an inquiry? Cause a lot of people, we use this, this term inquiry based learning. When you say someone yeah. is, has an inquiry, what could you give me an example of what that might be? Absolutely. And the beauty of an inquiry is that it's completely open to the individual. So one of the things that we in, uh, are focused on is, is, is asking better questions. You know, if you, if you want better answers, you ask better questions. And, and ultimately, an inquiry is just that. It's a, it's a question. So I might be a young person who's interested in a career in technology. That, that it could be as broad as that. It might be really specific around, you know, a specific task or something that they're focused on or that they're excited about learning about but they don't know any people who are who are directly involved in that kind of learning um, so it may be um, as as specific a question as the kind of thing you might see sometimes on Quora um, but the reality of, of Quora is it's not necessarily matching us to the right people the right content the right information um, a young person might might inquire 
about about uh, a grant or a scholarship, but they don't even know where to start. They, you know, they don't have funding to go to school or experience travel opportunities, but they're looking for those um, those opportunities and they don't even know where to start. So those kinds of things are, are ultimately uncovered in collaboration and asking deeper questions. And that's really what our platform intends to do is to provide those opportunities. How awesome. And I wish you well with your funding moving forward. We're moving to a commercial break. And when we come back, you can learn more about how to get in touch with Rebecca and support her and the Rethink Thinking Foundation, if you wish. Pam Thompson, The Art of Change, broadcasting from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back to The Art of Change. I'm your host, Pamela Thompson, and with me today is Rebecca Kirstein. She's co-founder of the Rethink Thinking Foundation, an amazing organization that does events for youth and is connecting youth with colleges, universities, policymakers, and you name it, they're doing it. Uh, Initially with events, and now they're building a global technology platform. So before the break, uh, Rebecca was talking about to us about what it's like in the future if you want to tap into this platform and sharing that a youth would be able to ask all sorts of questions related to if they wanted to go to a particular college or university, grants that they could apply for, um, just sort of the sky's the limit. And um, did you want to share some some last minute points about Rethink Thinking and um, what you have planned for the future? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's really, it's really our intention um, that, you know, all of our customers are, are ultimately partners of ours. So um, we absolutely are, are building relationships with, with colleges, universities, you know, training and, and um, vocational institutions, all kinds of um, institutions around the world that are also seeking this kind of change. Um, nonprofit organizations, um, business and enterprise, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, conversation right now out there in the world about the fact that, that people are really disengaged and there's, and there's mental health implications there um, and there's huge economic costs. And so um, it's really our intention to connect with as many people as possible and, and keep learning because there, you know, there is no one solution to these big challenges. Um, but we're really, uh, really focused on, on making change and, um, and we need everyone's support to do that. So connecting with um, as many educational institutions around the world to understand what we understand and, and who want to uh, be involved in the conversation and share their learning with us. It's, it's a huge collaborative effort and, and uh, we're really welcoming 
um, you know, the opinions, the ideas, the resources, the connections, the contacts, all of those things that um, that's ultimately how we got to where we are is, um, is really focusing on, on the end goal of, of making change and, and supporting our future generations. And so there's a lot of people out there who want to do that. And that's ultimately what's fueling this project. So there's, there's a lot of resources needed, um, you know, and we're really, uh, we're really excited to connect with people who, who see the opportunity here. Um, you know, with every great challenge comes great opportunity. So we're, uh, we're excited to connect with people who, who believe that's true and who want to be a part of the change. So Rebecca, further to that, how can, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you to both learn more and also to, to share if they have talents or things or, or dollars they want to share? What's the best way for them to get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they can connect with me directly, um, obviously through our web- website, rethinkthinking.ca. Um, they can also connect with me personally. Um, my email address is Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A at rethinkthinking.ca. Um, yeah, and my, yeah, my contact information is all over the place. People can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm, uh, I'm happy to talk to anybody who, obviously I can talk about this topic for days on end. So <laughs> we, we barely even cracked into it, Pamela. <laughs> so there's lots to talk about and, uh, and anyone who's interested is, uh, is absolutely welcome to reach out. And, and, and obviously investment is a big focus of ours. We've got lots, lots to accomplish over the coming years. So, um, anybody who's interested in that conversation, please do reach out. Rebecca, thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here today. I'm really excited by your passion and inspired. And I really wish you the best in moving forward. And may those investors come knocking at your door. (laughs) Thank you. And thank you for sharing your platform with, with me, Pamela. It's been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure. With that, I'm excited to share that my guest on next week's show On August 28th at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern is Pilar Portela, and she is a force for change as a woman in the technology sector, as well as being a CEO of I4C Innovation and Astra Smart Systems. Hope you're able to join us next week, same time. Till then, remember to embrace the art of change and make a positive difference in the world. been listening to the art of change with host pamela thompson tune in each week as pamela shares her experiences based on leading coaching and consulting across five continents learn firsthand about change leadership entrepreneurship and women in business on pamela thompson's the art of change you've been listening to the bbm global network The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.